Happy Monday, Flosstube. Hello, crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? Today is Monday, January the 25th. My name is Caroline. Welcome back, Daily Crafty Chat. And I'm recording here in London, Ontario, Canada. I had I had a new viewer leave me a comment last week. Another another friendly face from another friendly comment from London, Ontario. So, um, hi, welcome. If you're if you've uh, if you found me here, always nice to see see another local. Speaking of local, I met. Um, first for the first time face to face fully masked socially distant um, Lisa from Forest City Stitching I'll leave a link to her uh, YouTube channel in the drop-down box below she is another local to me London Ontario floss tuber and uh, and lovely videos so check her out and uh, yeah we met um, last week she picked up some of the she picked up her order of uh, Leo and Roxy floss and it's it was it was nice to nice to see her in the in, in reality instead of on the screen so that was fun okay so it's Monday I have a giveaway I should have this is actually from two weeks ago this is the because Monday giveaway from two weeks ago I did not do one last week so I'm catching up this was a full kit this is an embroidery kit uh, sorry, needlepoint kit, clearly, of a black lab. And the kit included the uh, floss. This actually is not done with yarn. This kit comes with cotton floss. It's put out by Eurocraft. And, oh, it's really sweet. Uh, this, the, I had, I think I had 23 comments on the giveaway post from this this particular giveaway and the winner was Dory Patrick so congratulations Dory this is going to be on its way to you you just need to email me your mailing address caroline at evertote.com and then I'll get that out in the mail to you it's very sweet okay so today I have a new giveaway to offer but it's actually not going to be coming from me I received an email um, a few days ago from a viewer named Katya who I met originally because of our mutual friend Josh. Uh, Josh Mole in the Netherlands who is many of you know by now and my friend and knitwear designer and uh, Katya started watching my channel because I think Josh had mentioned me um, on, on her Instagram page and so Katja hopped over and, and started watching the videos. She was uh, primarily a knitter and then decided to give cross stitching a go. So welcome to the club Katja and she has sent me a few photos uh, for projects that have been included in the past for whip parades and uh, and things like that. Katja also did one of the uh she was one of the test knitters for the caroline shawl and it's beautiful it's so beautiful her her version of it is so gorgeous she sent me a couple of photos so i'm actually going to pop them in i'm going to put them in at the end of the video so um make sure you stick around to see them because her yarn was beautiful it's sort of this soft lilac and pink combination and she striped hers with two different yarns um so mom if you're watching this you had been wondering if you could use that one skein that I had given you for Christmas. You could definitely use that, but you'd, you'd need to add a second skein of yarn. So maybe pick um, pick something from your stash that's complementary, that has, uh, you know, that they go together and that they're the same weights. And then you can use one of your skeins for the garter section and then the other skein for the lace section. I'll show you mine in a minute and I'll, I'll get into that a bit, a little bit further because I've gotten a little bit off track here because I was still talking about the Because Monday giveaway. It is coming this week from Katja. So she sent me a photo of a cross stitch kit that she started that um, she doesn't think she's going to finish because she was struggling a little bit with the black floss and seeing her stitches. Um, I think maybe her eyes, she was complaining a little bit about her eyesight. Now, 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say don't give away your kit Katja because um, I'm going to happily give it away for you. Katja says she will send it anywhere in the world. She is in the Netherlands so the winner of this week's giveaway it will be coming from her in the Netherlands. Uh, but just to keep on the topic of your eyesight and struggling to see things if you're if you're a brand new cross stitcher and you're um, a little more mature and you're having any trouble seeing anything there are a couple of things to try before um, before you necessarily or unnecessarily throw in the towel first of all I want to have really 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 good lighting so um, the some of the new LED craft lights that are out if you can get a, a table lamp or um, even those little mighty bright clip-on lights um, if you can clip it onto something that you can hold and over your stitching that's close by there they, it really makes a huge difference being able to really see it well lit so really good lighting is is first and foremost um, there are magnifiers that you can purchase. Uh, the one that my friends have had great success with is a product called Mag Eyes. Now, because I've never had to use them myself, you have to make sure that you are, apparently they come with a couple of different levels of magnification. And I don't know enough about those to offer advice on that. So you have to really read carefully what you're ordering dependent on what kind of magnification you want. Um, my eyes, if I wanna stitch, I take my glasses off because I am so uh, nearsighted that when I, when I take my glasses off, I can see very, very small things very close up. So it's, it's kind of, it's a nice, nice thing one of the benefits of getting older is my my close-up vision is getting it's improving <laughs> as I get older uh, so let me show you a photo of the chart that Katja is going to be giving away in fact I have yacked so much that what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've popped this photo in like five minutes ago so that you weren't sitting here waiting to see what it is so I'm going to show it again one more time just quickly here it is Just in case you hadn't been looking up, uh, I, I will have popped it in already, but in case you weren't looking, then you might have had a chance to see it then. So there will be a photo of the this week's Because Money giveaway. It always happens over in the Facebook group, Friday Off The Grid, and you are welcome to join us over there. And uh, yeah, just leave me a comment on the photo and then uh, Katja and I will pick the winner next Monday. And I'll have another new giveaway for next Monday. Okay, uh, next, I have an update on the Miss Margaret Ann Rollo, uh, the original sampler. Do you remember I told you last week that Krista had told me that she had managed to track down um, an ancestor of Miss Margaret Ann? and uh, that she was going to be returning this, the original sampler back to their family here in Ontario, uh, Canada. Well, she sent me, she sent me uh, an update on that and it's just such a wonderful story. I, I, I thought you might like to hear it as well. So let me, I'm just gonna read you Krista's message to me. Okay, so, uh, hi Caroline, I saw your floss tube mentioning an update for the Margaret Ann sampler. Yes, I gifted the original sampler to the Tweed and Area Heritage Center in Tweed, Ontario. The curator, Evan Morton, is a descendant of the Michael John family. Margaret's husband, Robert, was the older brother of Evan's grandfather, George Michael John. They are proudly displaying the sampler in the Michael John reference room. It is nice when family is found for antique samplers. Feels like the circle is complete. Have a great day and happy stitching. Isn't that fantastic? So Krista found the, the descendants of Miss Margaret Ann and they have the sampler now back, the original uh, sampler back in their possession. I think that is such a phenomenal story. I love that so much. So, 
this this is next up on my list of things that I would love to finish. Uh, it, it it's a small sampler, um, and I have a, I have a good ish start on it, but I've been working really hard on Savon, as you know, which I'll share in just a moment. I have two more things to share with you first before I get into my um, my personal crafting. So the next thing I wanted to tell you about was that I have sort of sort of I, I I think I need her to resend it uh Dorothy of history stick uh and the silk stitching app Dorothy you may remember two weeks ago I posted a video um Dorothy gave us a brief history um introduction to the history of the Fernanda samplers and um just what a wonderful speaker and a wonderful wealth of knowledge on these amazing treasures of, of stitching history. Uh, Dorothy has recorded another video and I, I was hoping to have to, to upload it on the weekend, but I could not get the file to open properly. There, there's something wrong with, um, I, I tried numerous times, uh, to, to, download the original file and um, import it into several different uh, you know programs to try and, and translate it into I don't really know what I'm talking about but I had John try to help me and I just could not get it to work so I've asked Dorothy to try and resend me the file and I'm really hoping that I'll be able to have that up later this week and it's a nice long 15 minute video so I just know it's going to be full of really beautiful stitching and really interesting information so we have that to look forward to coming later this week the last thing that I wanted to share with you um, and this is particularly geared towards um, so sew sewers sewists seamstresses in and tailors in the Ontario area okay so local to me I received uh, an email from a woman named Lori a couple weeks ago maybe two weeks ago now and her company name is Envelo and uh, they I'm just I'm gonna read you her letter she was sending she was asking me whether the, the, there was an opportunity whether I was interested in um, doing something for them um, but I I don't have time to to sort of tackle the sort of thing that they're looking for and I think it's it's also going to be something that is an occasional type thing not like full-time employment opportunity if that makes sense so I'm just gonna read you the letter that Lori sent me to share with you and then what I'm gonna do is I will leave her contact information in my drop down box below on this video. So if you think that this is something that you might be interested in, if you live in Ontario, Canada, um, and you're interested in this, I'm gonna let you go ahead and contact Lori directly yourself. So let me just read you this letter. Okay, so hi Caroline, thank you for the opportunity to tell the sewing crafting community a little bit about our company and the project that we need help with. Our name is Envelo and we are a small Canadian e-commerce bedding and linen business based in Toronto. We sell 100% cotton bedding and bath products. Like all re retailers, we receive returns from our customers. We are able to donate some of these to charity, but some of the products have been washed or damaged so they cannot be donated. We are looking to upcycle these into new products and that is where your followers come in. We hope to connect with local Ontario based sewers who would be interested in undertaking a home based project to turn these sheets into three to four different sized reusable storage bags for pillows, duvets and other household items. We would provide all required materials and ship everything to the sewers preferred location. We have flexibility on how quickly the project would need to be turned around, so it's perfect for someone who has a little extra time on their hands and would love the extra income. For more information and to learn more about us, please go to our website, 
www.envelo.com or email us at hello at envelo.com. Sincerely, Team Envelo. And again, um, the, the, late, the woman who contacted me, her name was Lori. So I, um, full disclosure, I have, I have never dealt with this company before. This was an out of the blue email that they, they sent me. So um, I, I don't have a lot of background information on this company or their practices. Um, it's simply, uh, I thought maybe, I thought it was an interesting opportunity to sort of, uh, you know, make use of something that would otherwise um, be discarded. I think that's, I think that's a, I think it's a, it's a lovely idea. So, um, but I, that's all, everything that I just read to you, that's all the information on it that I have. So if there's anyone who's interested, again, I will leave the contact information in the drop down box below. Okay. So do you want to see what I did? You want to see what I worked on? I bet you're all dying to know. Did she finish? Did she finish the lawn? Did she get it done? I didn't. You all knew I wasn't going to get it done, right? This weekend was 24 hours of cross stitch, marathon weekend, and I stitched more in this marathon weekend than in any other marathon weekend. I, I did 12 actual hours of stitching. That was like actual time my needle was going in and out of the fabric was 12 hours. I had a timer set at 24 hours and I just had it counting down and every time I went and had a coffee or went for a walk or, you know, did some chores, the timer went off and it was only running when I was stitching and I stitched for 12 hours. And that for me is a lot. I probably could have squeezed in two more hours last night, but my hand was starting to bother me and I thought better, better give it a rest because, well, we need our hands, right? So I... Got awfully close. Look at that. Ta-da. I am so close. You can smell a finish, can't you? It is, it's, it's coming. It's coming. Oh, so close. So this is Savan, S-E-V-A-N, by Landmark Tapestries and Charts from the Tapesta Pillow Collection. And uh, I received an email from Claire. Uh, Claire is trying to come up with some ideas as to how we can get a better cover photo on these charts. Uh, that's how they come. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the people that she buys these charts from, the people who have the rights to these charts, they don't really much seem to mind that the cover photo really is a computer generated, not even like, I think their printer's running low on, on colors and they just don't seem to really, um, they don't seem to really care. And it's really a shame because these, these charts are just like, look at those colors, right? I mean, come on, beautiful, beautiful colors. So it's, it's an interesting thing because the photos that I share of my close up work, on Facebook and Instagram, usually it's a much closer photo and it's under my, my light. And so you can, you can tell in those photos that my coverage isn't perfect, but isn't it funny what happens when you put it back here? So you can imagine it being framed and on the wall, you can't really see that it's not absolutely perfect coverage. So let me bring it up really super duper close and you'll see, you can see now, right? It's not, it's not perfect, but boy, oh boy, look at that. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So that's www.celtichobbies.com. Um, the, the woman who runs that shop, her name is Claire. Claire is the woman who imports these patterns from uh, Landmark Tapestries and Charts, and she's the one who has, she has the rights to sell them in North America, but she doesn't own the rights to the patterns themselves. She has to purchase the patterns. And so here's where the problem comes in, in that, um, you know, none of us are really satisfied 
with the cover photo because well it, it's really it's difficult to sell something that that doesn't really appeal when it, it looks nothing like what you're actually going to end up with so Claire has a couple of ideas as to how we can improve that um, so out of curiosity I know there are lots of you out there who are stitching Savon and maybe a couple other of the landmark char and tapestry charts that I've done uh, has anyone finished them yet if you finish them and they're not mounted under glass, if you could uh, get in touch with me and maybe we can get in touch with Claire. Um, she had an idea of maybe uh, that we could take some photographs ourselves um, and that Claire could could include those along with the, with the chart to make them a little bit more um, true to what they actually will end up looking like. Okay, last but not least is my Caroline shawl. And I was talking about this earlier, and now you get to see. I've only done like five, five, six more rows since the last time you saw it. But I, I am a lot happier with it as it's growing, more so than when it was smaller. So here's mine. And oh, it's so pretty. There's the lace section. So what I was saying earlier, um, Katja and Josh, Josh, Josh suggested this for my mom as well, that you use two skeins of yarn that are complementary, and you can, you can alternate them. So your garter section could be one skein of, of yarn, and then you could use a different skein of yarn in the lace section. So if you're knitting this along with me, there is a there is a hashtag. I don't think I, I haven't even used it yet because I haven't posted this anywhere. Um, this has just been when I'm resting my hands, it's the perfect thing to work on because the lace is fairly straightforward. I'm using a Madeline Tosh yarn, twist light in the jade colorway. Just beautiful yarn. So again, this is the Caroline Shawl by Josh Mall. All of the information is in the drop down box below. I had a couple of questions um, from newer knitters who, who were interested in um, knitting this along with me. And Sylvia, I know, I know you've, you've cast on yours. And uh, my question to you, and not just Sylvia, but anyone who's a, maybe a little bit of a newer knitter, and you're attempting a few of the things in this pattern. If you need any help with any of the techniques that are in the pattern that you haven't been able to find a good resource for on YouTube already, feel free to ask, um, you know, leave me a comment below because if I don't know that anyone is having trouble, then I'm, I, you know, I wouldn't just do a video just to, you know, yakety yak but if somebody needs help there's a couple of of things in the chart that I could point to that maybe a new knitter would sort of be scratching their head over and that's um, the increase the KYOK that's at the beginning and end and then there's um, the uh, anything that's in the lace work any of the directions that are involved in the lace work so if you are wanting to knit this shawl and any of those little techniques in there are are um, popping out at you as troublesome, leave me a comment below and, and I'll see if I can see if I can help out. And that's it. That's it. So this was my coffee break time. I am off to uh, package up some more floss. I've got some more orders that need to go out the door. Um, John has offered to help. I know. So John has offered to help and so I might I might teach him how to cut some batting tonight. What do you think? Think that'll be good for our marriage? <laughs> it's not like hanging wallpaper. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. I'll report back tomorrow. <laughs> we shall see. All right, well that is it for me. Don't forget, I'm going to pop in those those photos of Katja's uh, Caroline shawl that she that she knit for the test knit. And uh, that's it for me today. I'll check in with you guys again tomorrow. I hope you have a great night. 
I hope that you have a few minutes to spend just to do something purely crafty and enjoyable for yourself tonight. And I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Happy stitching. <laughs>